Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Helium One Investor Presentation. Throughout this presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Throughout this presentation, uh, questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just simply type in your question in the box below and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and will publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet Company dashboard. Before we begin, we would like to submit the following poll and we'd be most grateful if you can give us uh, an indication uh, by answering it. And finally, I'd like to remind you that this presentation is being reported. I'd now like to hand over to David Minchin, CEO of Helium One. Good afternoon to you, David. Hi, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, so I'm David Minchin, CEO of uh, Helium One. Uh, I'll, in a minute, I'll talk you through th through the presentation. But uh, first of all, to give you some background, I'm a, I'm a geologist by by, by uh, training, 15 years on the coal face before moving into um, private equity and then management. Um, quite literally on the coal face, actually, actually working for, as an underground miner for a while. So um, I, I know my way around how to how to develop a project and how to extract maximum value for, sh for shareholders. Um, as a geologist, I'm always look, looking for projects which are technically out, outstanding and which are the best in their field in any given um, in, in any given commodity class or jurisdiction. Uh, that's what interested me about Helium One in the first instance. It's very rare to be able to come across something which is genuinely globally strategic, which is significant for how a commodity is supplied and will influence that supply over the next hundred years. And to be involved in an early stage as, as we are now is incredibly exciting for me. So um, with any further ado, I'll turn off my camera and move into the presentation. Off, presentation on. So. You can all see the presentation on your screen now. Um, quick disclaimer, everyone here is a liar. And move into the first slide. As I, as I alluded to, um, helium is a crucial element and is used in a range of different tech, technology ap applications. Uh, a lot of people don't know much, much, much about it. They don't know that it's mined. They don't know that it's used for anything other than than, than party balloons. And they don't know that it's in critically short supply. Um, a part of what my job is is to try to educate pe people and to sort of get investors aware of how this crucial element is in under sub supply and the opportunity which that presents to the investor. Um, the Rukwa project is by far the best unexplored, undeveloped helium prospect in the world. It's uh, got a globally strategic resource and a potentially high high grade. Uh, we as a management team are the right pe pe people to be running this. We, we have experience of, of developing pro pro projects in a range of jurisdictions in, in Africa. We're, we're technically focused, technically led. Um, and I think we are the right time to to do this is the the right commodity at the right time and with the right people running it but i'll start by giving an introduction to helium a little bit of a helium 101 um you know i don't know what what everybody knows about the market but um it is quite opaque um it's used in a range of technology applications the, the it's got a Helium has a number of um, unique um, properties, which makes it irreplaceable and quite unsubstitutable in, in a number of applications. Its main property and the main thing it's used for is, is it's, it's, the, it's got the lowest boiling point of any gas. So if you want to cool something to within five degrees of absolute zero, um, which for instance, take advantage of its superconducting properties, uh, then you need to use helium. The, the, the most common use of helium for superconductors is in MRI scanners. Um, the, the, the use of MRI scanners has increased rapidly in the last 10 or 15 years, and it is expected to continue to increase dramatically as, uh, as, as MRI scanners are used, not just in hospitals in the developed world, but become part of the standard diagnostic toolkit in hospitals around the world. Um, 
there have been reports that China want to double the number of, of, of MRI scanners which they have in their in, in the hospitals in, in China in the next few years. Well, if they do, where's all that extra helium going to going to come from? Uh, another key growth area is in data centers. Now here it's used um, not only for its super, for its ability to create superconductors, which are essential for the rapid transmission of information. <laughs> Uh, it's also used in the hard drives itself. Uh, it replaces the air gaps between the solid state disks to um, make the the hard drive smaller and more and and more energy efficient. Uh, it's used as a purging gas. So in a controlled in a controlled atmosphere, for instance, where you're in a if you're doing high tech uh, um, microchips. Uh, then you would use helium in your controlled ap ap atmosphere and for high high quality welding in in aerospace. Uh, another key use for it in 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 in, in purging is um, uh, SpaceX. SpaceX buy a huge amount of helium every, every year to purge their rockets. Um, they're purging the helium fuel out of the rockets. Um, sorry, the hydrogen fuel, helium has got the smallest pore space of, of any gas. So to, to fully remove helium, out, hydrogen fuel out of your rocket system, you need to purge with helium as you're taking off. Um, it's to, uh, and as I'm saying, it's one of the, it's one of the unsung, um, unsung materials that fuel the modern economy and the, the applications for it are expanding all of the time. Um, What's not expanding, though, is the, is, is the supply. Uh, most supply of helium at the moment comes as a low-grade byproduct of hydrocarbon. Um, so, uh, for instance, the RAS gas and Exxon Mobiles provide about 30% of the world's helium uh, from uh, the fields in Qatar, where it's coming out of the ground at 0.05%. Um, the supply has, a large chunk of supply has dropped off last year with the closure of the US Federal Helium Reserve in Texas. Now that was a large strategic stockpile built up during the Cold War um, and has been, been in the process of being closed for the last 15 years, uh, which has been keeping the, the price of helium artificially low. Uh, as of last year, it's closed its its doors. So there's 20 to 25 percent of global production taken off, and that's been ref, ref, been reflected in massive pricing in, increases. Uh, it's a fairly op opaque market, but uh, as of last year, we were hearing prices of uh, $280 per MCF, which is up considerably from historical norms of 100 to 120 dollars per MCF. We're hearing uh, anecdotal reports of end users paying 40 dollars a litre as part of a standard contract this year. That's 1500 dollars per MCF. We're talking about quite substantial end users, you know, universities, hosp 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 hospitals. Um, we are in uncharted territories with regards to price for, for, for helium uh, because the, the supply has fallen behind demand to such a significant level and is not expected to recover at any time soon. This uh, increase in the helium price has been picked up by the market and by investors uh, who have uh, seen increases in pure play listed helium explorers increasing by more than 10 times in the six months between April and October of this year. Uh, these price increases have often come um, with on projects which are uh, smaller scale to what we're looking at um, the, or earlier stage. The the most advanced pro project, the nearest comparable which we have is Blue Star Helium, um, listed list in Australia with a project in America. And they've got an unrisked prospective resource of three billion cubic feet. Um, by comparison, our unrisked prospective helium resource is 45 times larger and is three times higher grade. So this is why when I say that this is a globally strategic resource, 
this is the we, we are significantly above any other listed pure play helium stock uh, in terms of size and in terms of grid. So to give you some background on the project, um, I can come back to answer questions on markets towards the end. If you have any questions, put them into, into the Q and A. But I'll talk now about the about the project for a while. Uh, we've been active in the country since 2015, uh, and because we've had a first move of advantage in exploring for helium and in identifying this this province. Uh, we've been able to pick up four and a half thousand square kilometers of license area um, and to secure the entire pers perspective area in Vukwa, IEC and B B Balangida. Now we've got three three prospects. That's not that's not, not a mistake. That's uh, us making sure that we were the only people with, with in the world with, with with access to this kind of materials. So, um, to give you the, the background, back in two thousand and fifteen, what the company founder Josh Blewett, who's still the technical director, um, he was driving through uh, Tanzania with with a friend of his, um, and was reading. Uh, a magazine on um, industrial minerals in, in Tanzania. That, that gives you a little window into the personality type of our technical director. And he's an oil and gas guy, so he'd been um, he'd been exploring out in Australia where they'd been get, getting quite excited with 0.03% helium as a potential economic byproduct on a, on a thing that he'd been working on. And he was reading in this article about... Um, about uh, seeps in the country which have been flowing out at 10 percent uh, up to 15 percent helium at surface and this is this was un, un, unheard of in his experience for, for helium um so he looked at the distribution of these and uh it's they're very similar to oil and gas where you'll find um an oil seep at surface on the edge of a, a of a rift basin uh, this in was highly analogous to the uh, Albertine Basin in, in Uganda, where there's oil seeps all around a rift basin with lots of oil inside the basin. And Rukwa in particular was off, was his priority target because it's a large basin with uh, multiple helium seeps um, and plenty of trapping structures and the right, and the right sediments there. Uh, the same with IEC and Balangida, albeit on a smaller scale. So we paid for ground. Over the last five five years, uh, we spent uh, nearly eight million dollars in exploration work. Uh, we, we've it's a it's a we've advanced the, pro the projects to the point where they're where they're drill ready, and that's the time when we've when, when we've had to when we've listed to secure su su sufficient finance to make sure we're able to develop the projects properly. That's the the history in a nutshell. Um, where we are in Tanzania. Uh, as a jurisdiction, people have mixed 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 views on it. Um, but in our opinion, it's it's a, it's a good place to work. It's the fourth, still the fourth largest gold producer in, in in Africa. Still the home to several multinational resource companies and listed junior companies. It's still a jurisdiction uh, where it's an established natural resources territory. Uh, under the law, helium is, isn't classed as a hydrocarbon or as a metal. It's an industrial mineral. It sits alongside cement and, and, and aggregate. As such, in the, event of, in the event of us entering into production, we'd be subject to a 3% royalty and a 16% government free, free card in, interest. We have been active in Tanzania for five years, during which time we've got got good relationships with the mining commission and with the, and with and with and with with the government. Uh, we are committed to operating as uh, good corporate citizens, employing local people to do work where we can, uh, making sure all of our license fees are paid on full and in time and minimum expiration expenditures have been met. And because of that, we've been able to get all of our licenses re renewed as, as of September of this year. They're valid for further three years uh, with, with an extension for, for two years after, after that. So we've got plenty of time to, uh, to de develop the prospects which we have. Pardon me. <coughs> the reason why we're in Tanzania is the unique geology. 
uh, and th this is also why our project stands head and shoulders ab above everyone else in the world and why we are globally sig significant. Helium forms over hundreds of millions of years in ancient con continental crust. It's formed by the um, breakdown of, of naturally occurring uranium and thorium isotopes in ancient con continental crusts. Um, and it gets released when that crust is broken open for the very first time. And that's happening in the East African Rift of Baba Valley, where the ancient uh, Tanzan Kraton is being broken up by plate te tectonic forces. And for the first time, crust, which is billions of years old, um, is exposed to hot cir circulating fluids. Now, these hot circulating fluids are also key. You need fluids of between 100 and 150 degrees to get into all of the microfractures inside the continental crust and transport the helium up to, up to surface. This leads to a very specific Goldilocks zone where if you're too far away from a volcanic center, so you're on the rift, but the volcanic center is too far away, you don't get those hot fluids and the helium isn't re released. On the other hand, if you're too close to a volcanic center, the helium which is released is diluted by carbon dioxide venting out of the magma chamber. So you end up with too low grade to be economic. In Rokwa, we're in that specific Goldilocks zone where we're the right distance away to uh, allow the production and release of high grade helium from ancient con con continental crust. But there's a third thing which is also important to this system, which is to have the system of reservoir, seal and trapping uh, to capture the gas as it comes up to surface and store it in, uh, in economic concentrations. Now this is why we picked Rukwa and IUC and Balangida out of all of the various uh, helium seeps which you can find in, in Tanzania. These are the ones which have got the, the, the reservoir, trap and seal um, sequences which which are needed for you know it's 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 very analogous to an oil and gas play. You, you need all of the parts of the system, and on the licenses which we have, we we have all the parts of this, this system. So for the last five years, we've been developing this. Uh, uh, the area was actually Rock has become our our lead pros prospect because there's a wealth of historical data there from hydrocarbon exploration undertaken in, in the 1980s. Now, that exploration was unsuccessful. There's no hydrocarbon in this system, but it was never tested for helium. Uh, we've been able to secure original data tapes for over a thousand line kilometers of seismic that covers the entire basin. Uh, securing the original tapes was important because it allowed us to reprocess the 1980s data using modern tech, tech, tech technology and modern processing systems. Uh, from that, we've got a very good idea of cross-sectional uh, sequences, so we can see the, the, the trap and the trap stru stru structures in cross-section. We've also flown a high-resolution gravity survey over the entire basin. Uh, that allows us to map the basin-basement contact because of the density difference between uh, sedimentary fill and ancient crust which has given us a not only a map of the of the a two dimensional map of the of the the depth of the basin sequence but also gives us a really good idea of where deep seated structures are which are mig migrating helium up 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 to the surface uh, we've done micro seep and macro seep analysis uh, understanding how helium is coming up to the surface and where it's dis dis distributed and from all of that, we've been able to calculate an independently verified uh, resource of 138 billion cubic feet. Um, that's the P50, which is the best estimate. Uh, the range from on P90 to P10. Um, so a P50 means there's a 50% probability that that is, what is, is what's occurring, risk weighted. Uh, the P10, which means there's a 10% probability, is over 500 billion cubic feet. So this, there's a range, and as we explore, that range will, in, will decrease as we come into what is the reserve. Um, to put into context what 138 billion cubic feet means, uh, at today's prices of $280 per MCF, 
that has an in situ value of uh, $36 billion. Uh, if we convert it into hydrocarbon equivalents, uh, it's the equivalent of a 14 trillion cubic feet onshore hydrocarbon play in conventional traps. Now, if that was a hydrocarbon, it would be a no-brainer. You know, that's what people fund and develop these every, every day. We've actually got significant advantages over a hydrocarbon play of the same size, which is that we have a very simple bimodal gas with a very high value product. Um, because of that, the capital cost for us to develop this project in the event of a discovery is going to be very low. We've, we've conducted um, high level um, high level engineering study based on a theoretical gas composition, um, which is based on what we've seen from macro seeps at surface. So we've looked at a containerized plant solution where the plant would be constructed elsewhere in the United States, shipped in in shipping containers and bolted together at site. Um, and the capital cost for production of 350,000 million cubic feet a year would be about 50, 50 million dollars. Now, it's too early for us to put economic numbers around what that would look look look, look like in terms of production. But 350,000 MCF a year uh, at today's prices of 280 dollars per MCF has a value of 98 million dollars. So you can see how rapidly, in the event of a discovery, this would become a um, high margin low low capex project uh, which can rapidly return value to shareholders um a part of that is that because it's it's a, it's a high value product uh, it gets transported to ports in liquefied con con containers in truck mounted iso containers uh, now we're only 35 kilometers from from the tanzan highway which runs from the from the copper belt in zambia out to the port of Dar es Salaam, it's a two-lane paved highway. We can put a truck a day, it's 350,000 is a truck a day. Um, and each truck contains, um, uh, it contains a thousand MCF with a value of um, just over a quarter of a million dollars. So logistics uh, and infrastructure for logistics is a minor uh, component of, of, of a very high margin operation. Uh, the other reason it works is that nitrogen can be vented out into the atmosphere. We, we've got our gas is 10% helium and 90% nit nitrogen, and nitrogen can be vented out. Uh, so we don't have to deal with a low value hydrocarbon component, which requires expensive infrastructure or um, a high grade of carbon dioxide, which would need to be re injected back into the, back into the reservoir. So if we find underground the same gas as we find at surface, it's a very simple op op operation. So therefore, what we need to do next is to find what's under the ground. Uh, this is why we've come to why we've come to market and why we've come to London is to raise the capital that we need to be able to mobilize. We're targeting mobilization of a three whole pro program in Q1 stroke Q2 of next year. Now we're using um, a mineral rig because it's a high value gas. You don't need to drill very deep to discover economic accumulations. So we're targeting our three lead prospects, which are on the base edge of, of, of the basin, down to a maximum depth of about 1,200 meters. Now, because of that, we're able to use a mineral rig because they can easily get to those depths. They are much, much cheaper than an oil and gas rig, and we don't like to waste money. Speaking of not wasting money, where we are using oil and gas cons consultants, we've been able to take maximum advantage of a downturn in the oil and gas market at the moment to secure some very competitive rates, for instance, in wireline and mud log log logging. Uh, and all of that is keeping costs down to make sure that we can do this three hole program with the capital that we've already raised. Uh, in fact, we went to market for five million to make sure we could do this with a comfortable with, with a comfortable margin. Um, we actually, the interest uh, far exceeded our expectations, and we we had hard orders in in, in our books of over eight and a half million uh, pounds uh, without really having to stretch our uh, without having to stretch to the edge of our contact list. It was, it was 
uh, it was a very fast and very easy fundraise. Um, be because of that, we decided to open the book up and uh, go and take six million pounds, uh, which has been enough to allow us to finance an infant seismic pro 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 program, which you can see here planned planned out in uh, yellow lines. Now, an infill seismic program uh, really complements what we're doing in terms of, of drilling. It'll give us a lot of additional inf information over the trap structures which we're targeting and will allow us to really refine our drill targeting. Um, and yeah, that's uh, it was uh, very good that we were able to raise our additional capital. So this is the this is the deal that we, that, that we took to, to get that. Um, you've seen admission documents published on the 13th of November. They're available on the Helium One website and on the Atis web, website, and will give you full background and full de details, including the CPR for the Helium Ones for a project. Um, there's an Atis general meeting next week on the 25th of, of November, assuming we get the, get the uh, we, 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 we get the votes, we'd be readmitted then on the 4th of, 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 of December. Uh, we've raised 6 million, and that is sufficient capital to take us through to, to a discovery. The seismic will help to refine the drilling targets, and the drilling in Q1 and Q2 of next year will test those tar tar targets and hopefully help us to reach the next valuation milestone which is uh, which which is a discovery, and that's when all the um, all the high ideas which we have and have as an explorer, uh, and the concepts which we have for explaining why why helium is here, uh, that's when they all get tested, and that's when we prove some prove some gas in the ground. Management team uh, for those of us who, who are interested, uh, we are uh, all African focused in terms of of, of, of our background. Uh, Ian Stalker, who several of you might might know, has had a very long and successful career. Uh, he's put over seven hundred million dollars into natural resources projects in in, in Africa. Uh, my, myself, uh, managing director, I spent for, I spent six years working on an African-focused private equity fund as the director of geology. Saw thousands of projects um, responsible for investing over 450 million in a range of commodities and a range of, juris of, of jurisdictions. I was actually introduced to this project um, less than six months ago by Ian Stork, Storker. Uh, because he knew that I'm someone who can get stuff done and get stuff done on on, on cost. Um, James Smith, uh, technical non non non, non executive director, uh, previous VPP for exploration at Orca, which was an oil, onshore oil and gas exploration company in Tanzania. A lot of experience of getting stuff done. Sarah Cope, who the artist share, shareholders may know, has been on the board for a long time. Uh, Rob, Rob, Robin Birchall, currently CEO of Guiani Metals in Botswana, again knows how to get things done in Africa. And Russell Swartz, our financial director, actually is a he is based in South Africa, um, and it has spent his whole career in in in, in the continent. We found that really explains what we were trying what we're trying to achieve here, and why I think we we make a a good investment proposition. Uh, we're the only company with a globally strategic resource of, of, of helium, uh, which in the event of a disc, disc discovery could change the way that this commodity is provided for the next 100 years. Uh, the commodity itself is in high demand and short supply. That demand is only going to increase as applications, which you know uh, currently are high tech, will become standard tech. And 20 years ago, if you'd gone for an MRI scan, you'd have been one of very few people in the world to ever have an MRI scan. And now that attributes to 20% of global demand and is growing rapidly. So this is a technology metal, which as we enter, <clears throat> as, as we enter into the 21st century is going to increase in, 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 in demand, but is currently supply constrained and that's re reflected by increasing prices. Um, because of that, really, we've come to market at the right time to be able to offer this strategic resource um, and to get maximum value for our shareholders by exploring and, and developing that. 
And I think that we're the right team to be able to do that. So. That's perfect. Thank you very much indeed, uh, David, for that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Um, but just while David takes a few moments to review those investor questions that have been submitted already, I'd like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, will be available via your Investor Meet Company dashboard. I'd also like to remind you that your feedback is incredibly important to the company and immediately after the presentation has ended, you'll be redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. And we'd be very grateful if you could uh, take the time to do that. Um, David, I've, I've got three pre-submitted questions, I guess, ahead of um, looking at those questions that have come in. And I wonder if I could start off with the first one, and, and they're, they're all short in nature, but the first one says, what sort of production would you be looking for? Well, uh, the engineering study which we did, the, the high-level engineering study we did, looked at a start case of 350,000 MCF, uh, which is about $98 million worth per, per, per year. Um, with the capital cost which we've got, you can see how we could rapidly finance ourselves into um, into additional mod mod modular trains. So each each, each process plant of three hundred and fifty thousand comes in modularized con containers. You just plug them tick together, and off you go. Uh, if we have a sufficient source and sufficient market, which we do, uh, then we could rap rap rapidly finance ourselves to grow up to. You know, to a billion cubic feet a, a year. Uh, it's still sort of fifteen percent of the global mar 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 market. We won't be looking to displace any of existing byproduct producers, but we would fill that gap in terms of uh, the excess supply, which which isn't being met, and and what came off from, from the closure of the Bureau of Land Management's U.S. Federal Reserve. Thank you. Uh, the second question is about the uh, fundraise, and it says you conditionally raised six million. How long do you think that will last you? So, yeah, that six mil million is going to fund us all the way through this first phase of of, of exploration. We chose six six million, not not by accident, but because that's sufficient for us to do the infill seismic and to do the three drill holes uh, with sufficient cushion. That we don't need to come back to market um and so we're, we're able to complete the technical program with, without risk that's very kind um and then finally I, I guess really directed at you with two hats on i guess but does the ceo um plan to buy any more shares in helium one i don't know whether you would like to answer that but i know you asked me to ask you all the questions so that i have well, um, the management team own a lot of shares uh, bit, 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 bit between us. The chairman Ian Stalker has put a lot of money in uh, in seed rounds and and onwards. Uh, technical director Josh Josh Blewett, uh, he's the founder and has you know had a lot of shares since. Uh, I'm I, I've 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 elected to be heavily to be heavily um, motivated by options. Uh, I've kept my own salary demands to a minimum because you know. Is ex exploration company conservation of cash is important by making sure that everyone is incentivized it's incentivized for our options because it's it's important that the management team is incentivized to work hard and to push this as, as hard as we can well thank you very much indeed um david if i could now ask you to just click on the q a tab well which will be yeah. on the right hand side of the slides there'll be a scroll bar on the right hand side could i ask you to uh read out the question perhaps even who it's from and, and then give your responses as appropriate um and that will be very kind thank you okay. uh working down the list uh steve p uh when do you expect to spud the first drilling well uh we're expecting to spud it in q1 stroke q2 of next year i don't want to be too much more precise than that because uh timelines can uh change uh it, it, it a lot of it will depend on access via the wet season and uh on the availability of the rig from the con from the contractor who we've selected um but we i don't believe in hanging about um you know if you if you're wasting time and you're you're just burning money, so um, we're looking to start as early in the next year as we practically can. Uh, 
Chris P is what is the geological risk for the drills? Uh, I assume that's referring to the uh, oil and gas uh, risking which they place onto 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 rig onto boreholes, um, and that's is itself a good question. Um, the risk weighting comes out at about twenty percent. Um, for those of you who are familiar with oil and gas. Uh, they, they develop a risk weighting based on a com by multiplying the risk on the different components of the of the oil and gas system. So you risk the source, you risk migration, you risk reservoir, you risk seal, and you risk trap. Now this is a greenfield basin; it's not being drilled, so therefore all those risks will be higher. Uh, source is relatively low risk because there's helium coming up to the surface. Uh, my migration again. When we know it's coming up to the surface, we're just migrating there. Reservoir. We know from the drilling that was done in the 80s, there's very good reservoir rocks with up to 30% uh, porosity. Uh, seal uh, traps. So trap. We are data limited by the seismic which we've got, which is why we're going to do do some infill size seismic. But on the seismics which we have seen, there is high relief trap structures. So. That's relatively okay. <clears throat> the big question mark is is on the seal, which there are sealing units there, uh, clay units, and there's bentonite horizons as as well, which makes an exceptional seal rock. Um, but that is really what needs to be tested by 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 the drilling. That's what we're data limited by. Uh, Nick J, what's your timeline to develop the opportunity? Um, well, I touched on that with regards to starting the exploration in Q1 or Q2 of next year. Uh, if we do that, we would need to move into field appraisal, which would require a appraisal wells being drilled. Um, so you, that you drill a well offset from the first well, you test one and then you test the other and you see how, that, how the pressure drops interacting between the two of them. And that gives you all the information you need regarding to your reservoir. Uh, we do 3D seismic because we've got a high value product. So understanding the geometry of the trap is, is crucial. Uh, and then there'll be engineering. We have surface engineering of how you design your production wells, what uh, specifics go into the process plans, logistics around it, et cetera, and so forth. So there's, there's a fair amount of engineering to be done, which would result in a feasibility study. Um, We'd be, lucky, we'd be looking to do that in the 12 months after discovery. Uh, and from, from there, it would be uh, to find project finance and then enter into construction uh, and get our mining license, mining license approved. So we'd like to pursue an aggressive uh, timeline, market and geological con conditions both being good. Uh, Another one uh, from Chris P. Have you explored any customer demand in terms of early takeoff agreements? Uh, yes, we have. We are, are in touch with end users um, and they have expressed uh, interest in taking helium from us. Uh, I think it's fair to say they're keen to explore alt alternative routes to get helium because they're finding that existing helium uh, market routes are quite difficult to get through, uh, and they're all short of helium. Uh, we've not signed anything because prior to, to a discovery, what's the point of signing an offtake? Um, you know, it's, it's, it would have to be non-binding on, on either party uh, because we don't know if we've got any gas for them to take off yet, which makes it kind of worthless. Um, we would also, you know, that also gives gives away a little bit of value because once we have a discovery then an offtake is something valuable which we can use to secure finance with uh, without having to dilute shareholders so we have seen interest from offtakers but we've not pursued it yet and nor will we pursue it until we make a discovery uh and then richard h if the asset is worth 36 billion in the ground why is helium only valued at 8 million uh Good question, Richard. Um, that's because it, there's no discovery being made yet. Now, as, as you, at the moment, we have a good concept and strong evidence to think that it's worth drilling. 
once we've drilled it and we've made a discovery, then we would expect to see the value of helium one uh, increase. Um, but at the moment, where we are at the moment, needing to secure finance to advance this project further, that's the valuation which made sense uh, for us to secure that fin fin finance and be able to um, and be able to get through this drilling phase. Um, Wayne G have been approached by potential partners. Um, well, yes, but we've not taken any opportunities. Um, a lot of a lot of potential partners, um, so existing helium distributors, um, aren't really aware of exploration risk, which has left them left them difficult to advance. In several years as a private company, uh, the company spoke to lots of people, obviously, but for various reasons, none, none of those projects, none of those um, uh, developed into fruition. Um, yeah, you know, the nice thing about this project is that it's a relatively low c c capital cost. It certainly would be achievable for a junior company to be able to do that on its own, um, or for us to develop it with a partner if that made the most sense in terms of returning value to shareholders in for, in terms of dilution, etc., uh, and in terms of advancing the 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 the, the project onwards. But we can do it on on, on our own. Uh, Lee G, how soon into Q1 will you have equipment on site to drill? And once started, how long before you have initial results, please? Um, we're probably looking towards the second half of Q1 into the start of Q2 to to have the hole in the ground. Uh, this is to give us time to run the seismic and to process that data. To, to feed it into the drill plan. Um, and that was an opportunistic decision made that you know, we, we've got that extra, that extra money, the extra data reduces the risk on, on, the, on the drilling by improving the resolution of, and our understanding of trap structures. Uh, each hole will take about a month to complete. Now we'll be able to report helium shows in gas, helium gas in drilling mud as helium shows. That won't be quantitative, but it will give you a qualitative idea of if we're hitting gas as, as we drill. Um, we're also going to perform drill string tests on completion, uh, which will test the helium flow out of each hole. So fingers crossed, soon after, after drilling, we'll be able to produce some, some used flow. Jonathan Yu. What's the relationship with the government in Tanzania like? Um, what sort of mining license would be acquired once the resource is provided up? Um, we are, we've got very good relationships with the government in Tanzania. We've been active for the last five years. Um, we have maintained a, a, a presence and um, maintained minimum license expenditures, paid all of our license fees on time and in full every year for five years. Uh, even when you know times were hard in in, in Tanzania, we've been very supportive, uh, and we've seen that some support we re re repaid with the renewal of our, of our licenses. Uh, so we've got good relationships with every level of 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 the mining commission. The license we would require is an industrial mineral industrial minerals extraction. Um, we believe i mean we you know, we we believe it would be relatively straightforward um lee g how do you expect the six million fundraise to last before you need to raise for for further funds um the six million is sufficient to take us all the way through this initial exploration uh stage so it's sufficient to do the seismic and to drill all three and to drill all three holes um so you know we it gets us through this first phase uh which is going which is scheduled to last us until the end of q q2 um joseph f given the recent election in tanzania what sense do you have of the government support for the project actually joseph um this is quite interesting because 
during the presidential address to Parliament last last week, he actually spoke about helium one, um, and he spoke about how it has the potential to be a strategic supply over the next hundred years, and how uh, he he thinks it's a project which should be 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 supported and developed. Uh, so, yeah, on the back of the election, you know, Tanzania is looking for a good news story, and we are, we are potentially one of those good news stories which a company which a country can have. Uh, and final question, Stuart M. What's the time frame to first production of the finished product? Stuart, it's probably a bit early for me to answer that. There's a lot of technical hurdles to be overcome before we can really talk about developmental time frame, developmental costs, developmental you know, mar 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 margins and an economic model. Um, it would be remiss of me to talk about that now, but um, in the event of a discovery, we would be pushing uh, to pursue an aggressive timeline. As you can see, we're already, you know, from, from listening to uh, exploration, we're pursuing an aggressive timeline, and we hope to be able to continue that momentum into, into production in the event of a discovery. David, thank you very much. I, th I think that is, as you say, that I think you've ad addressed all those questions. And of course, if we have missed any or any do come in after, they'll be available for you to, to review. Um, I guess before um, I redirect investors to give feedback, which I, I, I know that uh, you highly value, I, I just wondered if I could ask you to wrap up um, and then I will direct investors for feedback. Yeah, OK. Um... Yeah, uh, thank you everybody for attending this uh, meeting. I hope that it uh, helped to shed some light onto the deal that Artis has uh, concluded. And um, I look forward to welcoming you and uh, healing one's uh, other new investors uh, on the London market on the 4th of, of December. And uh, look forward to some very good uh, performances in the build up to Christmas and throughout the exploration camp campaign there, the, thereafter. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for your questions and any which I've missed, we'll come back to. Thank David, you. David, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide feedback. If you access this meeting from our website, then the feedback page will appear. And if you access this um, via the email that we sent to you, you will be asked to log in uh, to provide feedback. But, um, you know, you've taken the time to attend the meeting. We'd be most grateful if you could give uh, the company some feedback. That'd be brilliant. On behalf of the management team of uh, Helium One, I would like to thank you all for attending uh, today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. Thank you once again and good afternoon to you all.